haven't seen Jingle Bells. No. It really doesn't sound like a one horse open sleigh. Yeah, it's really good. It's really <laughs> and on that <laughs> note, welcome everybody. <laughs> uh, you just missed us uh, going through uh, Mar Mariah Carey. Uh, we Get to that again later. Uh, my my, we're sounding more like a Schubert than a Brahms mashup, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Welcome, everybody. Lovely to be with you again for um, looking at uh, Beethoven's Mass in C. I ho hope you've all had a, a wonderful week. I know some of you, it's not that long since you were last with us, because I, 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 um, I'm hearing that quite a few of you are doing pretty much every workshop, which is wonderful. It wasn't expected, um, but it's, it's lovely that you are joining us so frequently. So, so welcome. Um, notes for tonight. Um, few things to mention. It's the uh, other than the usual things, which is please subscribe and join our um, mailing list so we can send you lots of great information about things we're doing. But um, one important thing that I would like to mention that we've put at the bottom of, t of the information for this workshop is that we've put out a survey. We'd like to find out from you what has worked, what hasn't worked, what we could do better, what you've really enjoyed, because we are going to look at doing more uh, events from the space next year as we continue to to deal with COVID. Um, it's wonderful news, obviously, today that, that we, we know that they're going to be rolling out these vaccines in the next few weeks, but it is going to take months for that, to, obviously, to get through the entire population. So I think we can still expect that we'll be doing online activities for, for some months to come. So please do look at the bottom of the information there. You click on that, it'll take you to a uh, survey, fill that out for us. That would be very helpful. Don't worry if you forget, we'll put that also into our uh, newsletter that we'll send out on Sunday. Concerts, uh, just a reminder that we will be performing um, the Mass in C along with Beethoven's Name Day Overture on the 16th of December, which is Beethoven's birthday, and this is 250th anniversary year. That is a uh, live-streamed concert from Blackheath Halls, and as I said last week, we couldn't find somewhere where we could get an audience in too. And I just also wanted to point out that it won't just be the four lovely people behind me for that performance. Uh, there will be a choir of 16 for that performance and a full classical-sized orchestra for that uh, performance as well. So it, it's really going to be quite wonderful. And then we also have two concerts from St. John's Smith Square, Messiah on the 11th, or the Christmas portion of Messiah on the 11th, and a Christmas uh, carol concert on the 21st, and that concert is with um, Roderick Williams and Mary Bevan are joining us for that performance. And joining me tonight again, I have Zoe, oh, the soprano. So you want to say hi? Uh, Helen again Metz is our joining us as mezzo. Peter Daveron tenor, William Gaunt bass, and back again, Peter Pobbitt. <laughs> Zoe uh, has very kindly said that she will lead us in the warm up tonight. So I'm going to step out of the way and let you do that. Okay. Hi. So I think we'll just start with some physical warm-ups. Um, so if you can just, everyone reach up to the ceiling and stand on your tiptoes. Uh, bring your arms down. Roll the shoulders back. And forwards. Lovely. Great, so now we're just going to do some breathing exercises. If you want to have, when I usually do this, I put one hand on my lower abdomen. Um, abdomen. <laughs> um, so thumb maybe on your belly button and your hand resting beneath it, and the other hand on your chest. And the purpose of this is to make sure that the hand that's moving should be the hand on your lower abdomen and not much activity goes on at all at the chest area. So that's just a kind of a monitor. Um, so what we're going to do is just breathe breathing out, um, I'll click three clicks and that's the length of your breath and the length of the exercise. So I'll just demonstrate. I'll go breathe in, like that, okay? So there will be three clicks where I'm doing, an, um, I'm doing the exercise and then three clicks um, where I'm stop and you take over. So if you could oblige yep. me with that, that'd be great. So, and.
lovely. So I don't know if you notice when you're doing that exercise, the movement, the action that should be happening is that when you're breathing out, your tummy muscles go in towards your spine and then when you breathe in, there's a release and it's quite a low release breath of air. So that's, that's what you should have noticed. So to make it more obvious, clearer, now we're going to do some little pulsing. So... And now we just add a bit of voice. So it's exactly the same exercise, but you just, um, what's the word, vocalise that. So I'll go, is just do some exercises to warm up your tongue. So we're going to do some vowel exercises and if basically during this exercise you really want your jaw to not move very much at all and all the work to be done by the tongue. So if you imagine from the side, this is my tongue, it starts at the front on an E and we're going to go E, E, R. Okay, so E, E, R. And if you notice, my mouth doesn't move very much at all. It's just all going on inside. So what notice that to you? Okay, so we go E, A, I, and. Lovely. Now can we go, um, let's see. which involves looking a little bit silly and sticking out quite far. So it should be, the tip of your tongue should be behind your bottom teeth, but then the tongue comes forward as much as possible like this. Uh, it's very attractive. <laughs> so can we now go, um, same, let's the same pattern. So start a bit lower this time. Um, go, e, um, well, how, how low do you think we should start? I don't know, even there, so, yeah. Okay, so after three, four, Oh no, sorry, this is wrong. So it has to be I A R A R. Yeah, that's Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So I A R A R. And three, four.
do some jaw exercises. Can you just go for me? And. Exercises for mainly for the alphas and basses, but sopranos and tenors do join in as well if you'd like to. So we're just going to do some really low humming. Let's start on a B, please. We can just go. Transitioning from that low range into um, into the higher part of your voice, can we just go? Mm, um, no. Ah, and then back down again. So. Ah, Tennis will just do a little bit of high stuff. Um, basses and altos, do feel free to do as much as you can or want to, but we are going to take this pretty high, so please feel free to drop out as and when you wish to. Um, so, this, this song goes, is a bit weird, so it goes, in the afternoon, yeah, 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 in the afternoon. Okay, do you reckon you can handle that? So, we're going to start like that and then keep going up by semitones after the three, four. In the afternoon, yeah, 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 afternoon. In the afternoon, yeah, 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 afternoon. In the afternoon, yeah, 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 afternoon. In the afternoon, yeah, 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 afternoon. In the be warmed up after that. I, I, I certainly am. A um, couple of things. Uh, I just noticed there was some text just to uh, make it clear that the concerts I was mentioning start at 7.30. And oh, and hello to Stephanie, who's joining us from Bainbridge Island uh, in the absolute, one of the most glorious parts of the world in Washington State in the Pacific Northwest, which just happens to be, Stephanie, very close. I, my only uh, American family live in and around Seattle. So I know that part of the world very, very well, and I used to live in Vancouver and Victoria, so I 
have visited your island on a number of occasions, and what I do remember of, of, of the Bleudel Reservoir is one beautiful thing, but I also seem to remember there was a lot of microbreweries, distilleries, and wineries on a very small island, and they were all very good, I seem to remember. Okay, and I do remember, so obviously I was somewhat temperate in my, uh, my approach to that. Let's have a look at the Sanctus, please, which is page 61 in the Novello score, and page 42 in the Breitkopf score. Now, what I want us to do um, first is to think about the quality of, just the quality of the sound that we're making. I want us to sing on a single vowel, the R from Sanctus, so just the R vowel. And what we're going to do is we're, we're not going to worry about the, the, the passing rhythms and notes. We're just going to move from one major beat in the bar to the next. So, um, Peter, if you just play through a, a couple of bars with me to demonstrate. So for the first bar, instead of having that um, quaver, we're going to go from the first beat to the third beat, like this. Three and two, three, off. One, moving again to the third beat. Then the next bar, we're going to sustain that note. No rhythm. You're just going to sing it all the way through on one, and then move to the second beat. Three, one, two, three. All moving together to the downbeat of the next bar. Now, why are we doing this? Get the brain working for one thing, and secondly, because I, before we start putting in any of the vowels, which is the next thing we'll do with the rhythm, I want us to think about this lovely column of air. Think of yourself like a, 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 a pipe on a church organ, and Peter's just holding down the note on, on there, and we're just getting that note sustained for as long as we want it. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna support it. We're going, to, uh, it's piano, so we need lots of support. And then when we've got that nice and supported, then we'll start putting the vowels in with the rhythm, and then finally we'll put in the consonants. So here are the starting notes, Pete, if Peter would give us those notes. So this is the fifth bar, just on R. Three, breathe. really nice is that very long sustained note in bars seven and eight when it was just sung as um, uh, semi brief plus a note or two um, everybody around me still gave it a sense of direction and shape so hopefully you cottoned on to that as well any comments about sustaining here from anybody no let's just try it one more time that way same again here's your starting notes three Now, hopefully, if I was working with you in a congregational rehearsal, we could we practiced it like that for a number of times, working on the pitch. Because what so often happens, certainly because none of that's accompanied, is by the time we get to the last bar of page 61, um, bar 9, the pitch has often dropped. So if we could focus on supporting that and keeping the pitch correct, then we'll do the next step, which is put in the vowels. Can we just look at the, the first entrance, please, at bar five, sanctus, without the consonants, adding in the, the quaver now, but making sure that we transition really smoothly from one vowel to another. Let's, let's take that bar, please. Three, four. See how, ah, oh, how 
beautifully they uh, transition there. Can we take that again? Three, breathe. Oh. Lovely. And what are you thinking in? Not four in a bar, you should be thinking quavers in there. So one and two bar up. So have that internal rhythm of the quavers going on so that we get those really placed nicely together. Can we do the whole of this phrase now, singing all the vowels and all the rhythm, no consonants, just vowels and rhythm. So here's your starting notes again. Three, breathe. Okay, we'll take the Sanctus Dominus, but before we do, usually when I've done this, I've asked the tenors not to sing that S and give themselves a little bit of a breath um, to place that. Yeah. And, and let everybody else finish their um, Sanctuses with your Sanctus, so we get the S's. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's that? what I would, I would do. I'd leave, I'd leave off the S and yeah. let the other guys take a bit of a yeah. <laughs> breather. Yeah. Good. So that, this, is bar, this is bar six. Um, tenors, don't finish your sanctus there. Come down to the A. You're going to take a breath for because you move on to the fourth beat there. Um, yeah, so you've got that space to do that. So this is bar six. Three. Breathe. And one. Yep. Three. Breathe. So. Now that we've reintroduced the, uh, the consonants from that point, let's go do the whole phrase, um, starting from bar five, with the consonants and vowels, and this time we'll go on uh, to bar 17, which is the end of the adagio section, okay? Lovely. So in that uh, dominus, dominus deus, the, where we've got the dotted rhythm there on the downbeat of bar 14, and in the last bar of that bar, the yum, bum, bum, you are going to be far more accurate if you are thinking in quavers or you're subdividing the beat into quavers than if you're trying to fit it between such a slow uh, four in a bar. Can we just take that dominus 
Bar 14, please. Here's the starting notes. Three and four and one and two and three. Four and one. Exactly. Very nice. Uh, any comments on that section before we move on to the Allegro? Um, I would just say about how to pitch, that should get the notes in yes. bar 13. I mean, for the sopranos, it's relatively easy. You just kind of, if you hum along with the, well, what is currently the top hand, the right hand of the piano. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Da, da, da. It's, it's nice and easy for you, but I don't know if you other, other guys have some suggestions for your part, because it's... It, it just sort of comes a bit out of nowhere if you don't know it very well, doesn't it? Well, so the tenors and basses, you both have a B flat, don't you? Yeah. I, I've got a D, actually. Oh, so you've got a D. So yes. So the altos and basses have it. Yeah. So you, but the bars beforehand, we've got a sustained A in the bass exactly. part. Yeah. So um, you're just stepping up a semitone from that. Um, but being aware that we're then an octave down from where we've been. So I've written... Yeah. Or, in fact, it's not me. The person who had this score before me <laughs> has written uh, in bar 12, they've written themselves an, a cautionary low B flat. So already thinking about the fact that you're coming down the octave is, is worthwhile. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's a similar pattern for the tenors. It's just a third up. So you just essentially, you're going, in essence, up a semitone, but it's down the octave. So yeah. you're thinking very similarly. Yeah. It's, it's just... Just a question of working out your strategy, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Whatever is the answer. Yeah. Yeah. You can either sort of hum down the octave that you've sung mm. at first for practice, so you get used to where that placement is, mm. and then once you're used to it, you can stop humming out loud because that's yeah, sure. not what's written in the score. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you can hum in your brain. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then tenors, um, you also need to be thinking about the transition into the allegro as well. Uh, Peter, if you could play the bar before that, because we. takes you to the D and tenors you you start there. Shall we start there tenors? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's take the plain E swoop chain. Uh, not too fast. Two, three, and. Plain E swoop chain. Fabulous. Oh, goosebumps. Such a great little bit there. Let's go back and uh, break this down, please. Now, first thing is I've found uh, often is we, we lose the lower note in this um, tune. When it, so we go down the fourth F from the D to the A, and that often gets lost. And so I would ask, it's only Mark Forte, and we talked about this in previous weeks, uh, about how um, Forte particularly... Uh, until the middle and the later part of the 19th century, there's more of a variety, it's more like the 18th century. So I would say this forte is closer, please, to a mezzo forte than a forte, uh, a big, loud forte. Give it the energy, not too much volume, and let's make sure that we're basing how loud the line is going to be on how loud the A is going to be, the D to A, without forcing the A, if that makes sense. Uh, ten, uh, Peter, if, if you could... 
Yeah. Can we just do the, the ten? Absolutely, alive? yeah, let's do the ten alive. Two, three, and Pleni sun celi et terra et terra et terra gloria tua. Lovely. Let's take the alto line, which doesn't ne go nearly as up and down as that one. Let's take the alto line. Here's the A for this. Can I have the A? Yep. One, two. Pleni sun celi et terra gloria tua. So you've got to have the sort of energy of a, of a trumpet clarion call through that. So it mustn't, just because you've got fewer, sh sh your shape is not as interesting as the tenors, doesn't mean the line can't be as interesting as the tenor line. Let's take the tenors and the altos. Here's a D and an A. Three. And. Here's the soprano line. Here's a D for the sopranos. Three and. Lovely. And the basses. Here's your. Three and. Gee, let's have the altos and the basses because you're like the tr you're like the trumpets in this. You're sort of very <laughs> fanfare like. Uh, let's try this. <laughs> <laughs> he gives you more than just tonic and dominance. So here we go. Three and. <laughs> so that's one aspect of this section. Now let's take the other aspect, which was the tenors and the sopranos, because you pass over the same thematic idea from the tenors to the sopranos. Three and. Pleni sun celi et terra et terra et terra gloria tua. Everybody, that much, please. Three and. Pleni sun celi et terra et terra et terra gloria tua. Okay, let's take the tenor next line, please. A B, please, Peter. Three, four. Pleni sun celi et terra. Let's take the soprano line. Three, four. Tenors and basses. Three, four. Pleni sun celi et terra sun celi et terra gloria tua. Lovely. Alto. Here's the alto line. One, two. Fabulous. Basses. Three, four. So have the altos and the basses. One, two. Everybody from bar twenty one. Is your B again? Three, four. Pleni sunt celi et terra sunt celi et terra gloria tua. Let's take it from bar 18. So all, all six of those bars. Three, and. Pleni sunt celi et terra et terra et terra gloria tua. Pleni sunt celi et terra sunt celi. So that's just, it's tricky. Yeah. <laughs> so as we, it's more psychological than anything. It's not that high, really, is it? It's just very exposed. I'd say just if you um, get, get the ch out of the way as quick as you can, don't sort of do too much of that. Because yeah. you'll hear it. Just, um, and also if you, if you really grip at the start of celli, that's what causes yeah. jaw tension, and that's the last thing you want in that yeah. part of the register. Same for tenors. You never want to over... Yeah. Over yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. chew the words because then it, you get jaw tension, which yeah. s makes the tongue go all weird and just causes all sorts of tension you don't need. And as we've talked about before, focusing on the vowel in there mm. and thinking about this, the air, yeah. and mm. then yeah. 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 just yeah. nice and spinny. And, like, and then basses, <laughs> one of the things I will ask you with basses, please don't, please be thinking very rhythmically um, and don't shortchange me on that. Uh, a, uh, quaver there, the eighth note there, the A to the D. Um, often I find myself having to get the basses to give me a nice placed 
eighth there. Can we just take that, please, basses? Here's your A. One, two, three, four, and... Antenna. Exactly. Bom, bom. Yeah, really nice in place. So let's... Um, oh, that's fine. We demonstrated that. <laughs> let's take the... Tenors again. Let's take the tenors from bar... 27, and we'll take you through to bar 32, please. So starting the third, fourth, yeah, third beat of bar 27. One, two. Plenis um celli, plenis um celli, et terra gloria tua, gloria tua, gloria tua. Lovely. Uh, don't worry too much about that low E. I mean, do worry about it. I mean, try and get it right, but... Um, it sort of gets, can get lost, can't it? It can do it, especially because of the word stress. It's pleni sunt celi. So you, you don't want to overdo the knee in pleni anyway. Yeah. Um, but if, if you are a real stickler for getting the notes right, then think of it up the octave um, beginning. So, uh, pleni sunt celi, pleni, pleni. Think up, and then it keeps it in the right place, so that octave leap becomes a lot easier. Brilliant. Altos, let's take you please from 28. Two, three, breathe. <laughs> Very nice. Sopranos, you join another two beats later. One and. <laughs> Uh, let's go back to bar 27, please. Uh, tenors, altos, and sopranos. Please. 27. One, two. Pleni sunt celi. Pleni sunt celi. Etero gloria tua, gloria tua, gloria tua. Lovely. We're just missing one section here. Let's take the bass. Um, now, if anything... It's, these are all marked fortissimo in this score. I'm not sure what they're marked in the... Breitkopf. Yeah, they're marked fortissimo there as well. Um, let's bring that down, because we've got three sections that are all singing something fairly similar, and then we've got the basses who are singing something that really... Um, I don't want to get lost under everything else. So if there's anything that's fortissimo, it's the basses. Everything else is slightly less than fortissimo. Strong forte, let's call it that. Uh, let's go from that bar bass entrance, please. Here's your A. Two, three, breathe. <laughs> Fabulous. Everybody from bar 27. One, two. <laughs> to the lovely syncopated fugue. <laughs> Let's start with the sopranos. Okay, here's your A. Da, de, da, da. We'll take it slightly slower. Three, four, one. I love how Zoe goes up and she doesn't shortchange me on that E after the D sharp. And I always find myself fighting that too often. In it goes Oza, Na, and the Na becomes. But we, we need that vowel. Beautiful. Uh, let's have um, altos, please, from 35. And one. Do that much for now. Lovely, beautiful. Let's take the sopranos and the <coughs> altos, please. To bar 33. And one, two. Altos. 
Fabulous. Tenors, please. Bar 37. Three, four, one. Oh, Zana in excessis. Oh, Zana, oh, Zana. Fabulous. Lovely. And uh, basses. <clears throat> Actually, no, we'll come to the basses in a moment. Let's take the sopranos, altos, and tenors to that bar, and then we can take it through to the end, starting with the basses. So this is um, bar 33. Here's your A. Three, four, one. Two. Lovely. So let's take the basis now to the end. Is um, thirty bar thirty nine and one. Oh, Fabulous. Let's take the tenors, please, from bar 40. Here's a B. Three, four, one. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in action. Fabulous. Can I have the tenors and basses, please, up to <clears throat> bar 43? We won't do the, the final line just yet. So, so this is bar 39, tenors and basses. And one. Let's take the altos, please, from bar 40. Here's your E and A. One, two. Hosanna, 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 Lovely. Sopranos from bar 42. Here's your A. And one. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's take it back now, still at that same speed, <clears throat> keeping with this lovely lyricism. Let's look at the dynamics now and let's bring, let's exaggerate them. So let's start even more piano at bar 33. Keep it piano until the crescendo uh, is marked with the tenor there in bar 39. Gradually building that, please, so that we don't hit that fortissimo before we get to bar 45. Okay, let's take it from bar 33, still at that slower tempo. Three, four, one.
Very nice. Uh, when we come back to that, uh, I'll, I'll take it faster, but I want you to keep a sense of that lovely lyricism that we had uh, when we were just singing it at that slower tempo. Now, how are we doing for time? Let's have a little look at the, the Benedictus. Now, the Benedictus is largely about our soloists, so uh, nowhere near as complex as the previous movement. And you have these little interjections, starting um, after A, bar 1920, 21, in the, bright, in the novello score. Let me just find the right page. So this is uh, page 47 in the Bright Cop score. Just let me make sure that's correct. Yeah, uh, which is letter, bar before letter B in the Bright Cop score. Uh, let's take two parts at a time on this one. So here's um, the E and G for the tenors and basses. So I'm going to count from the beginning of that bar, and I'm counting quavers, eighth notes. Here we go. One, two, three. Benedictus, quivenit. Benedictus, quivenit. Lovely. So tenors, you've got the job of, of making sure that your uh, G there stays as rock solid as possible. So that with the basses, when they come and clash against that with the F, don't pull it up or try and make it into a, a nice concord. It needs to stay discordant there um, throughout that. Let's take the same for the altos and the sopranos, please. And you sort of go outwards from that C. So the C needs to be perfectly in tune. You go out to your semitone or your tone above and then back again. Yeah? So you really need to make sure that you're supporting this and only going a semitone or up a full tone if you're a soprano. Here we go. One, two, three. Benedictus, Lovely. So when learning this, and obviously, shameless plug for, for core here, in the fact that you can do the individual parts, and if you're learning the alto or the soprano part, you can learn it with the other part, learn it on its own, learn, learn it in. You need to l practice going from that C to make that minor third back to the C, and make sure that that tuning is perfectly uh, correct. And the same thing goes for the tenors and basses. And when you've got that, then put in the other parts and be listening across from your section to the other section to make sure the two sections are really in tune. You can't be thinking of this as just four separate lines. First of all, two pairs, and then those pairs making up the quartet. Can we take everybody, please, from, <coughs> from that bar? One, two, three. Lovely. And then very natural shaping through to the first beat of the bar. I think that's quite lovely. The next Benedictus. Let's start with the sopranos and the altos this time. So this is bar 28. One, two, three. Benedictus, so get that into your head that it's not quite the same shape. It's not that shape anymore. It's that shape. So we're going up to two uh, notes that are the same. Let's take the tenors and basses. One, two, three. Benedictus, quivenit. Everybody, please. One, two, three. Lovely. Now the next uh, in, uh, entrance, which is at B in the, no, in the novello scores, 
and somewhere else in the other school. Um, C. C. Yeah, C. <laughs> in, in the bright cop. Okay, let's try that. Now this, um, lots of tutti in this one. So we're singing all A's, then we're singing all D's, but in various octaves. Um, and then we're back to uh, everything being unison again at 39. So let's take that, please, from the Benny. Here we go. That B. Here's your A. Three, four, one. And that's one, two, and three. It's the rhythm there. It's a deliberate mistake. Yes, yes. You've got to demonstrate the mistakes as well. Very good eyes. Um, so, yes, big challenge there. Make sure that you, uh, obviously, we would work out breathing, uh, if needs be, around 46 for anybody who needs to take breaths. But make sure there's lots of support so we don't have the pitch dropping there. Because I do want the, the orchestra to be as gentle as possible. And the choir needs to not be relying upon members of support. You need to be your own separate um, entity from that. Okay. Uh, any comments on that? Um, no? Just in yeah. terms of in terms of support, making yeah. sure you're really. If you're focusing on the engagement with the lower abdominal muscles, you'll find that you are more economic with the air you let out to sing that long phrase, for instance. In uh, whereas it, you take a breath in bar forty-five. And ideally, you'd want to go through, yeah. as in one phrase. So if you're focusing on the lower abdominal muscles, then you are being really economical with your airflow, and therefore it should be easier to sing it in one breath. Good. We can practice that now, because we're going to go on to the next entrance, which is bar 66, which is the same idea, um, but we're on an A now. Okay, here's your A's. Three, four, one. Okay, so be very careful when you step up to that B flat. Yeah, semitones when you're rising, they are bigger than you think. Um, can we take the qui vein it again, please? Bottom of page 73, um, bar 68. This is the last quaver there. One, two, three. Take the next entrance, uh, bar 75, the sopranos and the altos, please. Here's your C and your F. One, two, three. Yeah, so just that little... D to an F sharp for the altos to pay attention to there um, when you're stepping up. Let's take the basses and the, the tenors, please. Same bar. One, two, three. 
So tenors, throughout this, please make notes of every time that you're sustained. Whenever you seem to have a repeated note, that's often when the harmony is moving up to a clash there. So really make it um, clear in your score that that's what's happening. Find the relationships to the notes around you and make sure that you're um, doing your part to allow those clashes to happen. <laughs> uh, let's take everybody, please, from 75. One, two, three. Lovely. And then you've got another Benedictus is happening in 81, 82, 80, 82. End of 82. Here's the soprano. Let's do the sopranos and the altos. One, two, three. Benedictus, quivenit. And the tenors and basses. One, two, three. Smashing. And let's have, I think we've got the idea now of this one. So let's go to E um, on page 76 in the novella, bar 90 in both scores. So bottom of page 48 in the, uh, the bright cop. Three, four, one. <laughs> Lovely, I love those few bars. Um, could you play Peter Foggett? Uh, could you play four before F, please? The bass line. I just basses. I want you to hear how we descend down to the A that you're going to come in from. So from bar 101, three. bass line along there okay so that's how you can because we really need a nice not loud but needs to be a solid a entrance there please super um bar 118 next benedictus is all in c's covering a bunch of octaves there bar 118 yep yeah. one two
Super. Now, I would probably put a breath in between venit and in nomine so that we don't have to stagger the breathing in the next part. Um, yes? Yes, definitely. <laughs> okay. Let's just take that again. Uh, so this is bar 124, 123. Take a, a breath between venit and in. Yep. Here we go. Here's your benedictus. And keep it as still as possible. One, two. Now the next bit should look a little bit familiar. So the next section, the Allegro, bar 130, page 80. Um, or page 56. What was that? Now? Let's take it the, the slightly faster tempo now. Ba di da da ba ba. Three. Four, one. So be careful in bar 140. Bum ba dum bum bum. So yum bum 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 ba dum bum bum bum. So you're not rushing forward when you jump into the Ozana. Um, and you also don't come in late on the next one. Da 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 dum bum bum. So be thinking bum bum bum, thinking those quavers going through as the sort of running uh, internal beat throughout that. Smashing. Um, any other comments on that one? No? Can I just say one thing about bar 123? You may. Beethoven's great, but this is a terribly <laughs> written alto line. So if you want, if you want to just sing the, the, the lower octave, it's totally fine, and then take the breath and then go up the octave. That's what I would do. So <laughs> singing the A with the tenors? No, no, no. The, no. the bar before. Uh, the, oh, the yes. Bend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would keep it vanit. He has a habit with that with the altos. They're either doubling the spinals or they're doubling the tenors. It's a real, yeah. it's sort of harsh, harsh world for, for the altos <laughs> with Beethoven usually. Oh, woe is me. Yeah. <laughs> what do we know about the Esterhazy choir? Peter, do you know anything about the Esterhazy choir? Nothing about the Esterhazy choir. No. <laughs> That's your homework. That's if your homework. Write in and tell us what you can find out about the Esterhazy choir. Um, but this, this was written for the same... Uh, chap that Haydn wrote many of his masses for. So, well, there you go. I'll see what I can find out. The, the, that one we just did? Okay, let's do that one again. So, um, you know what? Let's go from 119, just prior. So, the, the Benedictus just before. So, we'll transition into the Allegro this time. So, bar, so this is page 79. Bar 118 or page 55, bar, well, it'll be the same bar. Oh, no, it won't. Yes, it will. That's just there's a number missing off there, 16, 17. Yeah, 118. It's F in the uh, bright cough one. Okay? Benedictus. So we can also do what you were suggesting and put uh, <laughs> Helen's suggestion of the lower C there. Yeah? And one, two,
You know what? I think what I would like to do is continue on into the annual stage. Because we've only got one more um, session after this. We're already at our penultimate workshop. So next week, um, I don't think we'll get through everything, obviously, but we'll try and have as much of a sing through as possible next week. I think that's what we'll do to, to finish off the workshop. So let's um, sing through this, through to bar, um, well, through to the next section. We'll just do the, the poco andante first. <clears throat> Three and And then we get the solos. What wonderfully dramatic music. Um, first thing uh, is one of rhythm. So this must have a sense of, of movement. And it's uh, easy enough when you've got the accompaniment giving you the yum, bum, 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 bum at the beginning. The danger is if you're not continuing that rhythm on internally when we get to bar four, then 
You come in late with the quitolis and then it just starts to spread out across the floor, basically. We've got to keep that movement going. Yum, bum, 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 quitolis. There's nothing there. That rhythm has to come from inside you there. So, so subdividing that. Um, the next thing that can cause that rhythm to get out of place is what happens with the tolis. So if, if you take that too long before the next, um, then we could be late with the next quitolis as we go down that. So let's look at that from bar four, please. Let's have the uh, tenors, altos, and sopranos, bar four. I'm going to count the full bar so that you're thinking in those quavers, please. So one, two, three, four. Sweet oil, sweet oil is off, and that's off on the third quaver. It's not off on the second beat of the bar. Um, basses, it's always, I found, it's the making sure that that F sharp is as, is as perfectly in tune as it needs to be. Sometimes we get a little muddy down there. Um, and as William has said, forcing it won't help. So <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so that's the uh, rhythm on that one. Any other comments? Um, just for the tenors in that phrase with the altos and sopranos, just because you feel like you've managed to hit the top F, don't don't think oh that's my that's the hard work done. <laughs> Those B naturals are extremely important. So as you're going down that scale, make sure you try and stay in the same place. And if you do that, then it's less likely to go flat. Okay. Let's jump over. I think we'll, we'll just look at a couple of things, and we'll sing that section again before we go back. So let's look at this lovely um, bass section solo there, bar 27. And if I were finding that D flat, I'd be finding it from what's happening in the bass line from the beginning of that bar. So learning the bass part in the orchestra. If you could play that, please. D, da, da, la, la, la. Yeah, so learning that and, and finding your note through learning that line. Can we just take it from where you come in though, please, basses? Here's your D flat. One, two. This is another one of those places where we need to be thinking about what our line is doing in context to other people's lines. Let's take the alto line and then we'll put the alto and the basses together. So bar 28, here's the altos, here's your G. One, two. So the rhythm and the shape that the basses have get passed over to the altos and then you have sections where you're actually moving together uh, basses and altos rhythmically. So let's do the basses and the altos and listen for when you are, need to lock together. Here we go. One, two. <laughs> Let's take the tenor uh, entrance there, please, in bar 28. So C to a... Can you play the, uh, the A flat as well? Okay. 
three, four. Pick Beethoven playing around with his syncopation again, so you got that tricky little syn syncopation, yeah? Bum, 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 ba -di. So be still be placing it and practicing it with the eighth notes there, please, with the quavers. Can we have the basses, tenors, and altos, please? <coughs> One, two. Critonis Very nice. Let's take the sopranos. Now you're similar to the tenors, but you don't start on a C, do you? You start on a D. So that's the first thing to pay attention to. Um, let's take the, here's your D, D to an A flat, please. One, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> Lovely. Everybody, please, from bar 27. One, two. Critonis Fabulous. Lovely. Okay, let's have a look. You know what? Let's sing that much, um, and then we'll sing the, um, the Benedictus. Uh, no, not the Benedictus. There's not enough in there. <laughs> the Sanctus. We'll finish with the Sanctus, but let's sing the Agnus Dei, the Poco Andante, uh, section and then we'll we'll go back to the sanctus. Should be able to just do that. Okay, so be thinking all these quavers. There's twelve, eight, and above. Three.
Fabulous. Let's turn back to the Sanctus, page 61 in the Novello and page 42 in the Breitkopf and Hertel. Mm -hmm. And let's take it from the very, very top, from the very first bar. way to finish the evening. Thank you very much to my wonderful colleagues here. We've had great fun um, w working through this with you tonight. Uh, please join us for the last workshop in this series next week and any of the ones in between. Um, please do sign up for our mailing list, uh, core.app, so we can send you information on the live stream concerts, uh, which we'll be sending out uh, with our um, message this week and also please if you will do the survey so that we can know what to do or you can help us choose what to do next year and do it better and in the meantime stay safe and stay singing thank you very much and good night <laughs>